Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the latest interview in our little series entitled Of First Importance. And uh, we have with us tonight, Mr. Trevor Knight, who is a very, and I can say this truthfully, a very old friend of mine. And that is true in many ways. We've known each other for many years, and Trevor has been an inspiration uh, in my life, and I reckon I've probably been uh, a pain to his. Uh, so you're welcome to hear what we have to say in our uh, chat together. So Trevor, first of all, how are you? Well, I'm uh, happy to be here, Billy. Happy yeah. to see you. Happy to feel I'm back in dear Northern Ireland. Yeah. Okay. Well, Trevor, when I, when I first met you, my first impression was that you were very posh because you have that uh, upper class English accent. Would you Absolutely. Like to, would, you like to, <laughs> <laughs> would you like to tell us about your early days and your early life? Certainly. Well, I was born uh, 1939, just before the Second World War. I was not the cause of it. Uh, I was born in a place called Bedford. Many people will know that as the area of John Bunyan. Yes. Um, brought up, uh, we didn't consider ourselves poor in those days because everybody was the same in our street, living in little terraced houses, some of them with toilets at the bottom of the garden. It's how everybody lived, so we just thought we were ordinary, which we were. Uh, went to the local primary school. Oh, I better tell you, I was christened in the Church of England. Mm-hmm. And then at the age of five, they rejected me <laughs> because my parents took me along to join the Sunday school and they had too many in their Sunday school to take any more. Oh, that's, that's what they Amazing, told you. you. You were probably expelled <laughs> for going to or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, then my, my mum and dad sent me around the corner to quote the other one. Uh -huh. it, it happened to be a, a Moravian. Some people don't know what that is. I say it's sort of... Uh, um, Church of England in the morning with set prayers and uh, more like a Methodist at night yes. with the free service. Anyway, I enjoyed the Sunday school uh, lessons. Tell me the stories of Jesus and all that. Um, about 1314, grew bored, left, thought I knew it all. Um, but by then I'd passed the 11 plus, I'd gone to a school uh, with a big boarding, uh, num bo big number of boarders who came from, well, certainly all over Britain, but all over the world, really. And so I kind of got a, <laughs> I don't know what it was, not a Bedford accent, I assure you, a no. kind of a cosmopolitan mixed up all sorts of accent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well known at Bedford School. Uh, so that's my accent. And... Uh, yeah, I, 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 like everybody else, I suppose, I thought I was a Christian when I was young. Uh, teenage, you get a bit conceited, kick over the traces a bit, proudly say you've become an atheist, but it was only kind of uh, boyhood uh, bravado, you know. Yes. I didn't like the minister. Right. That if you didn't attend church Sunday, you couldn't play badminton in the church hall right. or midweek. Right. And of course, in those days, there wasn't even McDonald's. I don't know yes. whether coffee had been invented. Yes. I mean, there was just nothing but the church and the church hall. And you didn't. And I you used didn't, that as. You didn't I think that much, as, you, you didn't think much of church in those days. What What happened, Trevor, to change your opinion to the fact that you realised you weren't a true Christian? Well, um, the school I went to was a boys' school. I sometimes say I had a deprived childhood. <laughs> uh, it also had lock-up rules, which meant after half past six, no Bedford schoolboy was allowed on the streets at night or else next morning, you know. When the Christmas holidays came, you could understand we were queuing up mm. to have a late night out somewhere. And with two friends, we heard of a Christmas party, and, and this wasn't just for boys only, uh, nothing immoral or sort of a, a, anything nasty in our thoughts, but we just wanted to mix with the whole of society. 
and we went to this Christmas party. It was uh, pr uh, uh, planned by a group of people I'd never heard of called the National Young Life Campaign. We sometimes call it today Young Life. Games, it's, a, it's crowded out by the way, 100 plus in this rather small hall. Um, games, bars of chocolate, please sit down, we're going to sing a Christmas carol or two. Uh, I, I didn't realize, I just thought it was a normal Christmas party. And then one or two people spoke. Now, somebody was going to give it a test me. I had no idea what that was. I thought it was to do with the police and law courts. I, I'd never heard the word testimony before. And this young lady got up to tell her story. And I thought, oh, you look a nice lady. And she's saying, I'm so terrible inside. I thought, well, I think you've got it wrong there. You know, you look nice. <laughs> Didn't understand. And then somebody got up to explain the real reason of Christmas. And I thought, I'm back in religion. Oh, no, I thought. I remember buttoning my blazer. We three lads weren't sitting down with the rest. We were propping the wall up at the back. We were bed for school, you see. Okay. And um, I heard the gospel. I could tell you many details. Young man came across to talk to me afterwards. Lovely young man. And uh, impressed me. Um, we tried to rubbish him, you know. Uh, do you believe in God? He said, well... Fancy believing in something you can't see, we said. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, we said, do you believe in oxygen? Yeah. Well, we, we didn't see the point. <laughs> We're a bit slow. <laughs> and then I said, we, in any case, the Bible's full of mistakes, we said. Mm -hmm. Oh, he said, have you read it? Yeah. That makes no difference, we said. You know, he was so gracious and kind. Walked home. Well, I could tell you a lot. But I said to my pals, cut a long story short, I was very impressed. I went back home, tiny little bedroom in this tiny terraced house. Thought a long time. Eventually got on my knees by my bedside. Kept my eyes open. I was still a rebel. I thought those people in church, they close their eyes and go into a dream world. Uh, but I wanted to be real. I said, oh, God. And I added, if, you, if you're there and you can do for me what you've done for these, these people, because they, they, I certainly knew they were somewhat different to me. Uh, I said, will you please do it? Uh, and I stayed on my knees for a little while thinking, I think that's the first prayer I've ever really prayed. Mm -hmm. I wonder what will happen. And I must have had from some Sunday school or something, I must have heard of the day of Pentecost when fire came upon those first disciples. Were you, were and you I thought to myself, that, you? <laughs> you might think I'm making it you might think I'm making it up and I'm not. I thought, I wonder whether something will come through the ceiling. <laughs> you know? And I braced my I remember bracing myself thinking I'm ready, Lord. <laughs> Nothing did come through the ceiling. I didn't know what to do. Got into bed, went to sleep. Uh, the first change was I got up in the morning and I hadn't forgotten what I'd done. And I remember thinking, I wonder if anything's happened. I wonder if anything's happened. I couldn't get that away from my mind. And within the week, well, first of all, I'd gone out and bought a Bible. For me, Atheist, that was almost a miracle. Yeah. But anyway, I got a Bible and then I found out where these people met every week. And I went along. To and uh, I could tell you loads, but you better ask another question. Go on. OK, well, I, 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 I do know, Trevor, uh, in the years that I've known you, that one of the things that that, that night was of first importance to you. Uh, but following that, Another first importance Absolutely. was was the was the Bible. Um, how how do you see the Bible as first importance? Absolutely. Yes. Oh um, but, oh. Well, I do want to say uh, I was I was grateful for one Sunday school teacher. Uh, the church I went to, sadly, very sadly, I say this, 
kind of threw doubt on the Bible. You know, the, I, I could go into how they did that, but I had no confidence in the Bible. But Miss Newbold, bless her, caused me to, what's that song say? Uh, tell me the stories of Jesus I love to hear. Now, I always did love to hear the stories of Jesus. And then when I got this Bible, uh, quite a big one, big print, I thought, wow, what a book. I'm sure nobody's ever read it all. <laughs> if I start at Genesis, I might not get through. So I'll start at Matthew. And, and if I do the New Testament, uh, I might have a go at the whole Bible. Well, I was so keen to catch up. And uh, within about six weeks, I'd read all of Matthew, all of Mark, all of Luke, all of John. I wanted to catch up all of Acts. I'd got through to Romans 10 and 9, reading it on my knees in my bedroom. If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart, God has raised him from the dead. You Thou, if you like, or you shall be saved. Yeah. And I thought, just a minute, because I was just wondering, Wondering, was I truly saved? I thought I was. I felt it, but I needed something more. And there in the promises of God, I saw that something more to begin with. Uh, if you confess with you, had you, had I admitted I'd asked Christ to save me? Yes, I, I'd confessed it. Uh, did I believe it? Yes. Well, it said, if I did that, I'd be saved. And again, it might sound dramatic, in those days, I didn't know you were going to interview me, but I, I really did place my hand on the Bible. I looked up and I said, Lord, on those words, that promise, I stake my whole eternity. They're the precise words. And I, I found not only feelings that I was saved, but now I had faith in a promise of God, you see. So trusting what God has said, that's real faith, not just hoping what you think, but trusting what God has said. And uh, so I had my feelings, I had my faith, and then as the years have gone on, well, every Christian will tell you, you prove the Lord in this way and that way, time and again, yeah. and uh, it all comes together wonderfully. Yes, I was ignorant, but uh, I got there by the grace of God. Well, I, I, I know that you have uh, spent a lifetime, Trevor, trying to open the Bible to young people and to give them the same joy in it that you have had all your life. Why, why have young people particularly been a, of first importance in your life? Well, I, I think that, Billy, is because when I was, I was, convert, I would say I was converted at 17. And... <clears throat> God bless every Sunday school teacher dealing with primary or junior and Bible classes, 11 or 12. But to me, I don't think I was uh, mature enough or old enough or uh, I don't know what, but to me, it was when I was coming into young manhood and I could think and reason and understand. And I said, nobody's told me, nobody's told me why didn't somebody tell me this before and so my burden I think was for people round about that age because that was my experience mm -hmm. and uh, as I do I want to say God bless those who work in prisons God bless those who work amongst well care homes even uh, and God bless the Sunday school teachers we're, we're, we're a Christian brotherhood aren't we it's like the army, different sections of the army. <laughs> and God bless Sunday school teachers, God bless. But for me, because I came in, I call it young manhood, that kind of sixth form, what is it? A uh, year, oh dear, 11 or 12 now, isn't it? It used to be sixth yes. form in my day. Yeah, year, year 13, uh, yeah. <laughs> 13, is it? And, and university students, that sort of age group is, is what I felt at home with. Yeah. because it was my situation and i and and so many don't know they're just the same as i was they do not know yeah. don't haven't been told and uh that was the joy of sharing it with them yeah 
Well, look, it's, it's hard to believe this, but our 20 minutes, Trevor, is nearly gone. I want to, I want to, ask, I want to ask you one last question. Yes. yes. Can, you, can you think of one of those young people and tell us briefly uh, their story uh, uh, and the difference that, that you talking to them might have made to their lives? Well, one or two, I mean, I've just been for the uh, induction of a pastor whom, by the grace of God, I led to the Lord years ago. There are several stories. But may I tell you one uh, very different? i tell you about Colin. Uh, I, know Col lad. I know Colin. I know, you know Colin. Colin. Yes. What a story. What a yes. story. Bright lad, before the age of seatbelts, he fell out of a taxi in, in Bradford, was run over by a trolley. A uh, bus, uh, I suppose you call it. Bus, yes. Yeah, you know, trolley bus. And he was unconscious, I don't know how many months. And when he came to, he had uh, uh, he, uh, limited uh, in certain ways. He could speak uh, slow of a thought, we'll say, um, uh, uh, with educational needs, we'll call it. But he was a wonderful Yorkshire person. When he was about 20, he said, uh, Trevor, I can't take his accent off. I want to talk to you. <laughs> he, he came up with a university student. I want to be, I want to ask, I think he said to begin with, I, I want to become a Christian. Yes. We had a talk, the three of us knelt by a green Vono studio couch that we had, doubled up for a bed when we had visitors. We were just married. And uh, they both asked the Lord to save them. Now, Colin, as the years went on, oh, so faithful. First at any meeting, handing out the hymn books. He may not be able to do much more, but he did that with a great smile on his face. And uh, he never let me forget when he was converted. Trevor, it'll be two years this October. Uh, it's going to be seven years this October, Trevor. <laughs> Do you know it's ten years since I came to your house <laughs> and I knelt and I asked the Lord into my heart and he never let me forget. And once he said this, this would be all oh, 15 or 20 years later. Uh, Trevor, you remember that night I came to your house and asked the Lord into my heart? I said, yes. He said, I've been happy a man ever since. Lovely <laughs> Colin. He said, you remember that green couch you had where we knelt? I do indeed, Colin, I said. I've been thinking, if ever you want to get rid of that green <laughs> studio couch, <laughs> he said, I wouldn't mind having it. It was so precious to him, to him yeah. a place yeah. where he asked the Lord to save him. And uh, I said, I'll bear that in mind, Colin. I, I couldn't bring myself to say, it's gone to the tip, Colin. <laughs> yes, no. Uh, yes. Now, I, I point him out because one could point, if you like, to the brighter and the, uh, the more athletic and... Uh, we can glory in that. But you know, the Lord loves every one of his sheep. The young ones, the older ones, the simple ones, the limited ones. And uh, Colin was one. Praise the Lord that uh, he got me and he got Colin and he's got so many more. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry we've run out of time, Billy. We have run out of time, but thank you. Thank you, Trevor. And uh, I'll... <laughs> Be may, in touch with you again say, sometime. May I just say it's one of the rare occasions I've said more in one evening than you have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Trevor. I'm sure a lot of people will agree with you. <laughs> God bless everyone who hears our little chat. Thank I you. hope you come to know and love the Lord like we do. Amen. Thank you. God bless, Trevor. Bye-bye. Oh,